Hey there guys, Ian here. Today I'm bringing you a tutorial uh, for Cinema 4D and this is um, kind of a response to my cloth tear animation I did the other day uh, which is this one here. I said that if it got to 100 likes I'd do a tutorial and overnight it got 362 <laughs> so that was kind of unbelievable. I wasn't expecting that sort of feedback at all so yeah, I thought I'd have to do a tutorial. So I'll kind of do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I made this intro here. So the first thing I did was um, make the logo, which I'm actually going to um, steal from uh, the actual scene, which is this here. So I'm just going to steal the logo, which should be this one. Um, yeah just close that and load it in so this is a logo I had all it is is um, kind of part of a, a circle and also a four side spline and it's just swept along with um, a bit of scaling to kind of get that um, shape so it looks pretty cool and it works really nicely as well so this is, I'll delete the tags, the basic logo I had, and if I render, very simple, couple of materials, uh, preset materials, um, which for the tutorial don't matter at all. So I have this logo here, and the first thing I wanted to find out is how to kind of get cloth interacting um, with a logo. So the shape of my cloth to begin with was a sphere. So we'll insert a sphere here. In fact, now I've missed out one step. Um, if you look closely in um, the animation, it might be easier to show you with the actual file. Um, if I have it. Yeah. So if you look carefully, uh, we actually have these kind of rods all the way along and this is quite important to the actual animation as well, sort of. Um, they're really easy to make. All I did was get a cylinder, put it in, and just kind of place them around the logo. So I made the radius something like five and the height maybe like 70. Obviously this depends on your scene and kind of had one there, one there, then kind of one along that side and kind of repeated this until I had several of them. Uh, which one do I want to delete? That one. So here we have um, five cylinders all the way around and this is, uh, if I add the material on, pretty much exactly uh, the scene I had. So this is a logo set up. I think I had a few more, but that's fine. Um, and I wanted the cloth to actually interact with all of these. So um, I actually made a sphere here, which is the cloth itself, and just made it so the spikes kind of stood out just a little bit and I also increased the amount of segments to something like a hundred. Next thing I wanted to do was have it so it looked like almost these posts supported the cloth so I made the sphere editable by pressing C or if I go back a step you can press this top button up here. Uh, just deleted the tag here and and then what I did was go into here, go into the point mode, 
and selected all the points where these um, posts were. So there's one there, one in the middle, so I'm holding down shift here and it might be a good idea just with all the cylinders to go to basic and x-ray just so you can see a bit better so holding down shift got that point there then this point here again holding down shift each time just so it adds the selection on that point there and finally that point there so we have these five points here then I right click on the cylinder, go to simulation, cloth, then under dresser just click uh, fix points and set. And that will make all those points a kind of pink colour and that means they're fixed. And so now cloth will stick to that. Um, if I go into the tag and just put on, in fact if I just click play now you can see it sticks to these points here. So now I wanted it to collide with the logo and that's quite easy to do. Just right click on the logo, go to simulation and cloth collider and then when we click play it kind of bounces around on our logo. Now I realized if I did the same with the posts it all kind of mucked up a bit so I just kind of left that so there's there's a bit of glitch in the actual animation and it's not perfect but you can't really see because it tears up so much. So next thing I wanted to do was have it so it didn't actually um, fall down via gravity. So under the sphere I just changed the gravity to zero and that way it doesn't do anything. So the basics of cloth are just under this tag here called tag and at the bottom we have use tear. Now if I was to change the wind strength in the X to something like 3 and the wind strength actually to 4 maybe and click play you can see we get this crazy shape here and initially this is what I got and I thought that my Cinema 4D was broken um, and it was doing something horribly wrong but you actually need to go onto the sphere go to simulate cloth and then holding down alt go to cloth nerb and that'll make it a parent of the sphere and now if we click play you can see we get this tear and best of all these points actually have a bit of cloth stuck to them um, because they're fixed points and the logo um, is actually holding some of the cloth to it uh, because the wind hasn't really torn it off. So already pretty cool animation and um, it looks pretty good. What you can do um, with the sphere selected is just go to the polygon mode. In fact no you can just even simpler go to the cloth nerves and just up the subdivisions if you want it to look a little bit better and of course uh, you can also add more subdivisions to the actual sphere itself if you want um, kind of smaller tears. But for now I'm just going to keep it low just so it's easy to deal with. And if you notice at the start of the animation it's just perfect uh, sphere until a certain point. So I'm just going to change the time to 12 seconds and under the forces tag here at maybe five seconds gonna make a keyframe on the wind strength and wind turbulence strength and then the frame before just gonna zero them out and that's just holding down control and clicking the little circles and so what we have now is perfect sphere and when it hits a certain point the turbulence and wind start affecting it so I'm actually going to increase the wind turbulence up to 1 and that way we just get a bit more uh, strength in that turbulence and it's just going to tear it slightly more randomly. And this is the basic for it. The other thing I had was um, it being destroyed by, if I get it back up again, um, 
by this meteor. And this actually goes through it, smashes into the logo, and then you have hundreds of parts which actually come out and tear the actual cloth before the wind kind of tears it away. And again, that's pretty simple to do. For this example, I'm going to use a platonic and just bring it forwards a bit and shrink it uh, down to something more like this. Then go to plugins. I'm going to use Trousy because it's free, um, but I use Nitro Blast. Um, and make this into maybe 30 pieces and just click break now. And that's going to give you a piece broken up 30 times. Just tick the um, fracture object and under the tag go to um, it should be inherit tag apply tag to children and to all and then under dynamics we want on collision so next if we go to our top view here we want to drag this back a little bit to something like minus a thousand make a keyframe on the first frame and I'm even in fact, if I just disable the cloth, what I want to do is just bring this over a bit so it actually hits the logo itself. So somewhere here, just make a keyframe on the zero frame and then at maybe three seconds in, I want it just behind the logo and just press R and just give it a random rotation. and if you just highlight the first keyframe and make it linear. Now if we go back to our main view we get the logo coming in. Is it already breaking up for some reason? No we're fine. So it's going through and it won't look like it's doing anything at the moment. Is it? Surely it's breaking up. Is it not? Oh, my bad. Um, also, we need to add a collider to the logo. So right click on the logo, simulation and collider. And now hopefully when we play, it will fly through the air until it hits the logo and then it flies up and creates that kind of mess. And again, I'm just going to press Control D or Command D, go to dynamics and turn the gravity to zero. So this will actually um, remove the gravity on this as well. So it makes it look almost like it's in space. So we get this kind of flying animation. And if we right click on the platonic, go to simulation and cloth collider. Now, hopefully, um, it will interact with the cloth. So if we turn the cloth back on and click play, this is when it gets very slow. But you can see it flies in, bursts through the logo, and yep, all the pieces create a tear as well. And then after a few seconds, when it hits to five, you'll see that the wind and stuff kicks in and the cloth flies off. And this is how I created uh, the animation. The only th other thing I had in was a few textures. Uh, the lighting was really simple as well. All I did was use the linear daylight of Grayscale Gorilla rotated it round to something like there, made it pretty much um, just off-white, turned the sky off, and I had one other light um, just down here. And we can actually jump back into the other scene, and I'll show you exactly what I had. I didn't actually use those stars, so, exactly the same, but I believe my fracture, yeah, I used 200 pieces in my fracture rather than 30. 
so you can imagine it slowed down quite a bit when um, it gets around here but yeah I won't play through it well you can see just a little bit but it's exactly the same except my scene dies just because it has a lot of pieces in you can see some are tiny and some are a bit bigger and creates this really nice looking tear and pretty simple to do another tip when using um, the cloth if I jump back into our faster scene and I'm actually just going to delete the platonic if we were to apply a texture to I'll use the same one pretty much I believe it's this um, if I apply a texture to our sphere when we get to the actual um, fracture you might actually be able to see that the texture almost stays still and um, the cloth kind of moves and that doesn't look very good so a quick tip when doing this kind of um, animation just click on the texture go to tags and generate gen generate uh, UVW coordinates it looks like it changes slightly and you get this tag here so when we play through now and go to the tear now the texture actually moves off and kind of sticks to each polygon like it was and this is a great way to make it look um, a lot better so the only thing I did in post really was add a background then use trap code form to create all the little stars and added some motion blur and that was pretty much it it's a really simple project but really effective especially with the cloth kind of hanging on um, to little bits of it and all around um, looks really nice um, the smoke as well is just done using trap code particular if you look up um, the video copilot tutorial for smoke streaks and you can just adapt that to whatever you like um, that uses a light which I exported from Cinema 4D um, which was tracked to the rock there so you kind of got the light following with it and as you can see really nice animation and it has a bit of motion blur on the cloth uh, just to give it a bit of realism and you can see the rock has it as well coming through here um, so I hope you learnt something and I hope this is a tutorial that will be useful for uh, many projects. If you do use it for anything feel free to credit me or uh, post it as a video response to this video. But other than that just have a great day and yeah I'll see you next time.